If you're a podcaster who's selling a product or looking to start selling and monetizing your show but might be struggling to make profit, then stick around because by the end of this episode, I'll be revealing a remarkable secret to monetizing that will allow your podcast to truly thrive. Hey everyone, welcome to Impact Podcaster Academy. My name is Alec Hassan, and I help podcasters create more impact and income with their podcast without them needing to rely on getting sponsors or going viral. So, how many of you have ever walked into an ice cream store and got a free sample? You know, you might go in, you try a couple flavors, and uh, they, they put the ice cream on this like little tiny twig, and honestly, it tastes more like wood than it does like the actual ice cream that you're trying out. But it, anyway, eventually, you find a flavor you like, and then you go to buy it. But I want you to imagine that when you go to buy the ice cream that you sampled, the ice cream clerk is like, oh, I'm sorry, sir, or ma'am, you know, we, we, we don't actually sell ice cream. We just give out the free samples. You'd, you'd probably get like a look on your face. You'd be like, what? And then you look at the clerk and then you just kind of be thinking to yourself like, how in the world is this place still in business? And what's funny is that we come across this, if like if we were to come across this in like an ice cream shop, we could immediately point out the flaw in this approach to how they're doing business. But when it comes to our own podcast, we don't recognize that we're basically doing the same thing. Now, maybe you're giving out free samples, but you aren't selling anything anything more for those who want more. Or maybe you do sell something, but it's so inexpensive that you may as well be given away for free. Yet you're still wondering why you aren't getting the amount of revenue you feel like your podcast deserves. Well, let's solve that problem in this episode. So in previous episodes, I've briefly gone over how this framework that I call the transformational journey can work in your podcast. And the purpose of something like a low commitment offer paired with the transformational journey uh, helps to introduce people into your world and makes it much easier for them to get to know, like, and trust you. But since something like a low commitment offer or a lead magnet isn't meant to be profitable, um, we should start talking about offers that will actually be profitable <laughs> for your podcast. And that could be the main you know, stuff that'll be the main financial foundation that will help sustain and grow your show online. And this type of product we call a supporting product because it literally can support your entire podcasting career. Now, this will be a milestone further in the transformational journey. Uh, it's priced between like 30 to $500. Most of the time, the supporting product is gonna be comprised of like multiple types of media. So it might be a combination of PDFs, audio clips, uh, videos and an example of this could be any type of like home study course that you might buy online or like any type of online course essentially so people do like to have physical products too and they may even pay more to get something in physical form but you'll have to survey kind of like your audience to see what they say you know if you're trying to think if you're going to give a physical thing versus something digital that might be something that's specific to your own audience so definitely ask them see what piques their interest more uh, but don't ask Here's a little random tip. Don't ask friends and family about their opinions when it comes to stuff that you're doing online uh, because the most valuable feedback will always be from your own audience, people who are actually going to purchase from you. Um, so anyway, another type of product that you could offer are continuity programs. These are essentially like memberships, you know, anything that's a reoccurring payment, like monthly membership or like a yearly subscription. It could be ten dollars all the way to three hundred dollars a month and uh, it could be something physical as well or it could be something digital you know think like like any of the adobe products something like netflix um, hello fresh is a good example of like a physical monthly service where they actually will physically deliver you pre-made meal kits so you can like make your own foods and stuff it's not this is not sponsored by hello fresh even though it'd be pretty cool if it was uh, but that's just like an example i could think of Oh, there's also like magazines, you know, Time Magazine. They send out their ma magazines periodically and you, you pay for like a, like a reoccurring like subscription type of thing. There's My Daily Bread. That's another continuity program. Uh, but keep in mind that continuity programs and payment plans are totally different things. Continuity plans, they continue to charge people indefinitely until, you know, the product's no longer offered or the customer decides to cancel their subscription. But a payment plan, uh, they can charge monthly or weekly. Uh, however, the monthly or weekly charge, it does have an endpoint, which would be 
whenever the cost of the product is fully paid for. So I've seen continuity programs that simply send out like weekly tips and tricks via email, you know, like workout tips or something like that. There are ones that give people access to private monthly interviews, uh, even me like just emailed newsletters that are comprised of like different articles, audio tapes and statistics. These are things that people have put together and have offered as like subscription plan things. Now, obviously, the more that is offered, the more you can charge for it. And uh, the next type of product, so the next type of product that you could offer, we, we've talked about the supporting product, we've talked about the reoccurring subscription product, and the next type that you can offer, there's, it could be like an online course, but it'd be like a more premium course. Uh, or like a master class training, you know, it's often referred to as that. These are much higher ticket. They're well over five hundred dollars, and they can go into like multiple thousands of dollars. So typically between like five hundred or like three thousand dollars. And it's like, whoa, that's like a lot of money. But it's also like you're providing like a lot of value in those courses. So these courses, they'll have multiple forms of media. It's not, you know, it's it normally isn't only video, or only PDF, or only audio files. Like these online courses, most likely have like every single one of those things offered within them. Some even provide like live weekly updates and bonus trainings to those who purchase. So for example, there's an online course that I bought like a few years back, it's around like $2,000, and it came with virtual worksheets, audio files, training videos, but it also included like a free subscription thing to live weekly updates from the creator. And he'll go live in, the, in like Facebook groups and stuff every Monday and during the years that he's been running this thing, he's only missed a single Monday over like multiple, multiple years. And he only missed that Monday because he just, he was getting married that week. And it's like, oh, that's a valid excuse, you know? <laughs> now, another variation of the online course is to have, you could do like really cool things with it. You could have modules that are released at varying times spread out over multiple weeks, even multiple months. And this is referred to as like spaced learning, not space like outer space, but you know spaces between the uh, chunks of information that you're giving out. So basically what this means is rather than someone signing up for a course and having access to all of the, all the material at once, the modules will be restricted and the person can only get access after like a certain period of time passes. So let's say someone signs up, they're immediately able to access module one and then after a week, then they can access module two after another week, then they get three and so on and so forth, you know? Uh, my, fi my fiance actually had got me a course that had a similar approach. You know, I had to work on a specific module for that week before I could get access to the next one. And this was actually like a really nice feature because it cuts down on the overwhelm, but it also like encourages people to put in the necessary work for each module. And a thing you should know is that when it comes to things like courses, these things are very, very specific. They rarely and practically never are, are something broad. So the first course that I got was about running in-person seminars. Uh, the, the course that I was talking about that was like spaced, uh, that was helping people create online courses from scratch. Now having a price range between $500 and $3,000 means that a lot of business and podcasts can generate a lot of revenue <laughs> with just this one type of product and it can very easily just be the backbone of one's entire online career essentially. But if you can believe it, there's like even higher level of services that you can offer to the world. And this is called a high ticket product because it's like a very high priced thing. Now this ranges as you could probably have guessed anything from $3,000 and greater, but um, anything over like 100,000, which is like kind of mind blowing, um, that goes into like a whole different different realm, different category. Uh, now these are very, very big big numbers. Anything between 3,000 and 100,000, I'm like, whoa. But that's why it's called like high ticket, big ticket product. So if you're asking yourself like what in the world justifies offering a product at that price. Well, <laughs> this type of product typically involves your personal involvement. It's basically a difference between like uh, buying a course from Dave Ramsey versus paying Dave Ramsey 
to work with you one on one. Um, there's a, there's like workshops that people can can offer where it's like a three day or like a multiple day like live training thing. I've seen ones that are like offered for like a little over like ten thousand uh, dollars. People will pay to attend like three day workshops where they get to work one on one with people um, in their market in their niche that'll help them take their lives or their businesses, whatever. It's like that next level all within a short period of time, but they're working one-on-one with the people, which is why the price is so high. And they'll offer things like housing and like food, stuff like that. Typically, you know, with something offered at that high of a price. So don't assume, you know, that big ticket products are hundred percent profit because let's say you do decide to offer one, but it includes things like flying out a client who hires you or the price you know they pay is also going to include costs for hotels so you're paying for their flight you're paying for their hotel and their food so or like let's say they pay you and you go to the client you're going to use the money that they paid you to travel to them and you know so you can start to see that like obviously um, if you decide to offer this type of service you know it's going to require you to tap into that to that money that they paid you and obviously it's going to require you to interact with people one-on-one so it also requires you to actually like interacting with people one-on-one so that may not be for everyone however it is possible to work one-on-one without actually working in person so for example there's um, a podcast called scribe book school it's a show where uh, four times new york best-selling author tucker max he will actually work alongside other authors and break down the best practices for self-publishing books. But they also have a company called Scribe. It's just called Scribe. And they offer a variety of done-for-you services when it comes to like publishing books. And they can actually help people write and publish professional, professional books. They'll create a professional book cover. They even help to do like the marketing of the book. And the prices range depending on the services that you need. And what's amazing is that you never actually have to work with them in person. They can do everything just with like phone calls, Zoom meetings, even just like emails. And I had the pleasure of working with them. I can actually like personally say that for their high level of professionalism and polish, it's definitely worth the prices that they charge. They take all the, all the stress out of the actual publishing process of getting a book published. So if you do decide to use their services, just let them know I sent you there and, uh, you know, they'll probably, they'll take good care of you. <laughs> um, but I'm not, I'm not like affiliated with them. I don't get, I'm not sponsored by Scribe Media. I'm just a happy customer. But technically you could get, like when it comes to the things that they offer, you could buy from other people all the stuff that they offer at a fraction of the price by going to a website like Fiverr. But when you buy from Scribe, you know you're you know you're getting high quality. That's guaranteed, and you're going to get the peace of mind of that, knowing that you got a team of people who are handling all the tiny details that you might miss if you tried publishing for yourself for the first time. So, even if someone can buy the services that you're looking to offer at a cheaper price to your audience, as long as you can provide it at a higher quality while also giving them more peace of mind, then people will be willing to pay a lot more for it. So, if you can provide like that high level of service where the person doesn't even need to worry about what you're doing, then that price can easily be justifiable right then, like just with that alone. So other types of high ticket offers, these could include things like private networking events. It could be group coaching, consulting, could be live online classes, which is basically just like an online course, but it's done live instead of like pre-recorded. Uh, private networking events are actually they got some cool things going on with that that you could offer where basically um, you would host a private event people would pay to attend but instead of you like leading the entire thing it's people in the event it's like so it's a, because it's a networking event it's people in the event who are helping to like lead the conversations you basically just provide a place where people can meet up and you then offer different topics that people can conversate about and you can imagine it kind of like a party where all the people there are people who have similar interests and they just want to help each other grow Uh, when i was studying to do physical therapy there was actually a physical therapist that i knew who joined one of these private networking events and it was hosted by richard branson and this 
I, this was like way before he like even did the whole thing of like flying to space and stuff like that. But in this group um, that this physical therapist went to, he got to learn about all the upcoming therapies and alternative medicines that most med schools hadn't even began looking at yet. Plus, he got to learn about how other like therapists were monetizing their knowledge to sell to people who weren't able to come to their practices in person. Because most of the time, a physical therapist is like, oh, yeah, you got to come to me, and then I can help you out. And this dude was learning about how he could do that virtually without even needing to have people come in. And after attending this event, he was able to increase his revenue by like 10 times the amount that other physical therapists in the area were making because he was making a lot of money selling his stuff that he knew online. And when people actually wanted to come see him in person, he was able to charge higher fees because he was now reaching out to like people around the world that were willing to fly to, to him to, to learn his innovative practices. So his pricing wasn't based on who around him could afford him. It was based on how much people are willing to pay to see him and how much like how how willing they were to actually get improvement in their health. So thing that's cool is that even though Richard Branson was leading the private networking event, I'm sure you could guess like he's not a physical therapist. So how in the world was he leading it? Well, the reason why he was able to lead it is because he just simply provided the space for people to come together to learn from one another. So there are also events where it's like more instructional base where you could think of it like a seminar or a large co large college class where you are teaching stuff to people. Um, this is where you have one or a few people. You could have a few people talking about preset topics to teach to those who are attending. Uh, there's also group coaching, which it could be seen as like a more like personal version of the event or seminar because the group is much smaller. You know, they they'll meet more frequently, and these are normally priced so that people pay once. And or maybe they pay like once a month. In some cases, uh, they might pay for an entire year up front, and then they get to continue to come to these events and continue to like learn and network from people. Um, <clears throat> and that actually leads us into the next type of high ticket products that you could offer, where people actually offer they actually like provide one on one consulting or interactive online trainings. Now this is very similar to like the online course that I talked about previously, except this time, instead of only releasing modules once a week, you'll actually release your content and then later in the week can like actually call up and interact with people or like the students individually. So since you're calling and talking with people individually, it could be like, you could imagine very time consuming. If, you, if it's an hour call for like 10 people a week, that's, that's 10 hours if you were to do that all in one day, but typically, you know, you probably like space it out. Um, and sometimes, People can do some, they'll do stuff where they'll just host like a group Zoom call so that everyone can just be in there, ask a question. And um, it might be like one longer call, but at least it's not like a 10 hour call because you're not speaking with each person individually. It's like everyone's collectively getting to talk and interact with each other. So, you know, as you can see, there's quite a lot of options. You can have your podcast built solely on one product type if you like, or you can structure it like Legos, you know, where you're picking and choosing what fits best together for you. And uh, you can have one thing lead into the next thing. And it's like you kind of can ascend people up higher and higher where you start low price and then you build up to higher prices. Uh, you could have one or you could have everything I talked about incorporated into this like transformational journey. It's, it really is up to you. But what you should take away from this episode is that you got to list out all the ideas for an offer um, that you can create that's between $30, $500. And then you should list out all the types of things that you could that you could offer, like courses, physical products, virtual events or packages that you could offer people between $500 and $3,000. And if you want to shoot for the moon and do you know, those mastermind events or the one-on-one -on -one consulting, that's like stuff that's priced higher than $3,000, you could list out all the ideas that you have for that. Um, and what you'll have after listing out all these ideas, starting with like the lower price and building up to the higher price, you basically have a roadmap that your audience can follow. And as they're moving on in this journey, they're paying more, but they're also getting way more value and are seeing way more transformation in their lives. So I hope that this episode was able to inspire you to figure out what more you could offer 
for your audience in ways that can impact them significantly while also allowing you to create some significant income as well. So thank you so much for listening. Stick around, make sure to subscribe, all that jazz. And I look forward to seeing you in the next episode.